insurance. Like CBS12.com. More local stories, more video, more weather. CBS12.com. Connected to you. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. A little more aggressive. Kick a little butt. Jack is back. 80-year-old Jack McKeon named the interim manager of the Marlins. Was it a good or a desperate decision? Our panel weighs in. Greatest mistake, greatest failure. I can't think of a, a mistake or a failure that I, that I haven't more or less benefited from because it's made me um, healthier. Yeah, we'll see. Isaiah's greatest mistake in our inside story, Isaiah Thomas on his Knicks tenure, and our panel on whether he'll end up with the team again. Plus, Rory's glory. Rory McIlroy wins the U.S. Open. Can he be another Tiger? Hang on, South Florida. You're going beyond the game. You're watching Toyota's Beyond the Game with Rick Horan, the only produced sports business show in the country. Now, let's get down to business. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Game, and we give you an inside look at the $750 billion business of sports. I'm Rick Haro. Let's meet our Toyota opening drive panel, a Gator panel this week, Florida Gator, sports agent Darren Heitner, CEO of Dynasty Athlete Representation, and sports business analyst Brian Fankel. Thank you both for joining me. Yeah, maybe I'm not hip with the, the Twitter or Facebook or stuff like that, you know. 80-year-old Jack McKeon is a trending topic for sure. He's back on the bench for the Marlins. The cigar-chomping cigar McKeon succeeds Edwin Rodriguez, who resigned last Sunday. McKeon, who led the fish to the 2003 World Series title, had been working part-time as a special assistant to team owner Jeffrey Loria. McKeon's higher Marlins trying into three-week freefall. The Marlins' June swoon, one of the worst ever. They're just 2-21, and 21, the third worst month ever by a major league team to this point. And by the way, because of an upcoming U2 concert, the Marlins' homestand uh, this weekend against the Mariners being played in Seattle. Maybe they'll find what they're looking for, a win. Hey, guys, McKeon, the second oldest manager in baseball history, is Jack's good, a th a return a good thing or an embarrassment? Well, first of all, that was a, it was a very great and subtle U2 reference. I don't think it's a good thing. I think it's a great thing. Forget the 2003 World Series. Forget McKeon's experience as a manager. The Marlins needed somebody as a stopgap to take over right now in the middle of this season. The answer wasn't someone who had ambitions to be here long term. It wasn't someone who was managing another club and could take over at the beginning of the season. And most importantly, Jack McKee is someone who will speak up to young stars like Hanley Ramirez without worrying about the repercussions from the front office. I agree. I think, but why not focus on what he did in 2003 when he came in halfway through and led the Marlins to a World Series title? Also, look at his old managerial style. Yes, he's eight years older than he was in the past. He's 80 years old, but he can be the difference in changing the attitude of this young, talented team. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Marlins president uh, uh, David Sampson says that, that he uh, knows uh, more and is uh, brighter and sharper uh, than half the people working with, uh, with him. I'm not sure how that cuts. We'll have to see. McKeon's first order of business was to bench Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez tonight, having his second Hanley straight Ramirez. poor season. The trade deadline in a few weeks, and should the fish trade Hanley and build around a new core? First of all, it's hard to say that Hanley is having his second straight poor season. Last year, he had 21 home runs, 32 stolen bases, and a 300 average. And yes, he is having a slow start to this season, but look for him to turn it around. He is only 27 years old. 
This is a part of that yalted core of the Marlins that should be kept together, especially with a brand new stadium in the works. I completely agree with everything that Darren said. The one thing that I would add is that Hanley Ramirez, along with being one of the best players in baseball, is playing under a very, very affordable six-year, $70 million contract. You're not going to be able to find a player of Hanley Ramirez's caliber at a contract like that throughout the rest of the major leagues. $70 million. That's a bargain. Yeah, it's a bargain, but also uh, let's uh, look at his attitude and let's look at him loafing after the ball last year. And all of those issues call into question whether the guy really does have a future with the Marlins. Again, we'll have to see. Logan Morrison called out Hanley to his face, not to mention the front office on Twitter. McKeon mentioned Twitter before, but owner Jeffrey Loria told Morrison to zip it. How much blame goes to the Marlins brass for creating a frigid culture? I'm going to stop short of saying that the Marlins' brass is creating a frigid culture, but at the same time, I totally disagree with Jeffrey Loria trying to censor some of his players, especially Morrison, who's extremely popular and is a fan favorite, especially on Twitter. Not only is Logan Morrison hugely popular amongst fans, he's also a leader in the Marlins clubhouse. The Marlins should be fortunate to have outspoken players like Logan Morrison, who really rile the fan base and, and get people interested in seeing this team play, despite their poor June. See, and I think we're making a big deal out of nothing. Laurie didn't put a muzzle on Logan Morrison. Check out Morrison's Twitter feed. He's all over the place. If anything, he's just trying to stop this negative attitude amongst the team, which I think is a move in the right direction. Yeah, hard to get uh, 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 players reacting positively to an owner telling anybody to be quiet, no matter what the context. Thanks, guys. Is Jack McKeon getting better with age? Well, if other people are an indication, the answer is yes. Joe Paterno still going strong at 84. Vin Scully calling Dodger games at 83. Howard Schnellenberger at FAU at 77. And the late Ronald Reagan was elected president at the age of 69. And Brett Favre played till he was fun. An unreal performance from Rory McIlroy, the 2011 United States Open champion. Roy McIlroy, a remarkable victory at the U.S. Open. He finishes at 16 under par, the lowest score ever in the 111 years of the tournament, breaking Tiger Woods' record from Pebble Beach in 2000. And youth is served as 22-year-old McIlroy, the second youngest major champion since World War II, only behind Tiger Woods' historic victory at the 97 Masters. Roy also in good company with Seve Ballesteros and Jack Nicklaus. Hey, guys, is it premature to say Rory McIlroy can be the next Tiger Woods on and off the course when it comes to generating interest in golf among casual sports fans? Yeah, I think it's definitely premature to say that he's capable of generating that interest among casual fans. As great of a golfer as he is, he needs to show that he's able to have success on the course constantly. Tiger was extremely marketable, catering to the black and Asian American market and also wowing over crowds with his impressive drives and his flashy play. I think Rory isn't showing that flashy play yet. Maybe he'll change it around, but for the casual fan, I just don't see it. Well, Tiger Woods is one of the two best sports endorsers of all time, along with Michael Jordan. So, uh, yeah, it's way too early to put Rory McIlroy in the same revered category as Tiger Woods as a golf ambassador on and off the course. But as it relates to casual fans, I do think that he has promised reaching today's youth as a 22-year-old. Maybe he can... You know, generate some interest in the game amongst uh, the teenagers and people in their early 20s the same way that Tiger did in 97 because golf writers are talking about Rory McIlroy in the same revered way they were talking about Tiger Woods after his 97 Masters win. So we'll see, but it's a little too early just yet. Humble, articulate, intelligent. He can hit the heck out of the golf ball. Just remember, Jack, 18 majors. Tiger, this guy won, so let's not coronate him yet. Tiger missing next week's AT&T National as he continues to recover from leg injuries. How much do you think McElroy's big win and talk of him being the next big thing like to fire under Tiger once he returns? Not at all. I thought Tiger would have that fire lit under him when he came back at the 2010 Masters following his much publicized sex scandal off the course. At this point, I think Tiger's problems are mostly physical. Uh, he's had a lot of leg injuries. He doesn't need Rory McElroy or any other golfer to light a fire under him. I agree. I mean, you look at the fact that Tiger's having issues with his health. That's first and foremost concern for Tiger right now. And second of all, the fact that a 22-year-old golfer won the U.S. Open is not going to light a fire under Tiger. Again, we need some consistency first before Tiger gets worried. Tiger watches everything, listens to everything. Right, he doesn't need the fire. He just needs to make the six-foot putts after he gets healthy. Hey, prior to the final round, NBC ran a vignette 
with the Pledge of Allegiance, cut out the words under God. What do you make of this controversy, guys? I'm not making much of it. The vignette also cut out the word indivisible, but do we really think that the United States is about to have another civil war? I mean, absolutely not. Let's be honest. This isn't even the worst thing to happen to NBC television in the last year. Look at the Rosie O'Donnell show. Uh, Rosie Live. I mean, that was a total failure, so let's not even go there yet. It's certainly something that NBC regrets. Uh, the reality is, warranted or not, that not everyone is comfortable with saying under God and the Pledge of Allegiance. I think that NBC regrets what happened, and the fact that a U.S. congressman came out and said that the USGA should review their relationship with NBC is absolutely ludicrous. It was a mistake. It was something that NBC wouldn't do if they could do it over, but it's not something that warrants the, the controversy that it's been getting. There's not enough sports news right now. It's just something to focus Summer. on. Summer. Good segue, by the way. Rosie O'Donnell, I remember her that when she butchered the national anthem. Kind of cool, interesting. Uh, Got to go, guys. U.S. fans not feeling too patriotic these days. The last five major winners are international players. Phil Mickelson, the last American to win a major, the 2010 Masters, and... Also, Rory McIlroy became the fourth straight player in his uh, 20s to win a major, the longest such streak since 1897. NFL labor news, NFL owners and players will resume negotiations next week, hoping to build on recent talks. While each side has acknowledged progress in the four-month-old lockout, a new collective bargaining agreement does not appear to be imminent. Once the owners and players can agree on how to divide revenues, $9.3 billion last year, other issues could fall into line pretty quickly. Chad Pennington says he plans to skip the 2011 season and work for Fox Sports as an analyst. Pennington suffered another major injury to his throwing sole shoulder in his lone Dolphin start last season and tore a knee ligament while playing a pickup basketball game in March. Pennington, who turns 35 tomorrow, said he might consider the field in 2012. Tiki Barber says the failures off the field after his retirement from football in 2006 led to a year-long back with depression. The 36-year-old has spent the last four months working out in an attempt to make a comeback. Barber said football represents a necessary anchor in a life turned upside down by the aftermath of scandalous divorce and disintegration of his television career. Look at Serena. Uh, I, I think so emotional for her. Coming up on Beyond the Game, Palm Beach Gardens resident Serena Williams, which, with an emotional return to Wimbledon, what she had to say. What's the one thing you'd most like to change about how people perceive you? I'm good. Oh, uh, yeah, and our inside story, Isaiah Thomas talks about his future with the Knicks. Could there be a sequel? Plus, is Nike encouraging people to get high with a cool new T-shirt? We'll tell you who thinks they are and what they're doing about it. Plus, ESPN and Fox went all in on poker. Why the networks might be ready to fold. You watch your Toyota's Beyond the Game on CBS 12. We're back in one. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices, highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Hi, I'm Bob Quayle, proud owner and operator of Toyota Vero Beach, where you're always welcome at your hometown dealer on the Treasure Coast. Come and see us. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices, highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. It's been so hard, and um, you know, it's just, it's been a disaster year. Serena Williams' emotional return to Wimbledon. It's her first action since winning the tournament a year ago. Since then, she had foot surgery after stepping on broken glass, and in March, she suffered from a hematoma as a result of a pulmonary embolism. More than any major, Wimbledon's winners are consistent. A Williams sister has won the championship nine of the last 11 years. 
side, only two men have won the title in the last eight years. Roger Federer six times and Rafael Nadal twice. Let's play fast money. Commissioner Bud Seeley rejected a proposed television rights package that would have given life to Frank McCourt's ownership of the Los Angeles Dodgers. After a two-month investigation, Seeley concluded that too much of the 17-year, nearly $3 billion package with Fox would be funneled away from the Dodgers, who were straining to stay relevant under McCourt's financial bind. The 2011 World Series of Poker is underway, but growing disinterest among networks such as ESPN is placing the future of poker on TV in serious question. It's a product that's grown to about 50 programs airing each week. But in April, the U.S. Department of Justice went after the founders of the largest online poker enterprises, and the networks have been folding shows ever since. Nike creating an uproar with a new range of men's T-shirts and pill bottles, and the phrases get high and dope. In Boston, the mayor is not amused and has called on Nike Town to pull its display. The company said the T-shirts are part of an action campaign featuring using common expressions in surfing, skateboarding, and BMX. As I, Isaiah Thomas says never say never, but he would return when asked if he would return to the Knicks to replace departed team president Donnie Walsh. Thomas left the Knicks in disgrace in 2008. In our inside story, Thomas on his past, present, and future. Reflecting back on your illustrious career, what, what do you think your biggest success has been? Uh, my greatest success, uh, probably, uh, say, making it off the west side of Chicago and getting past 20. That's, that's been the biggest success. Greatest mistake, greatest failure? I can't think of a, a mistake or a failure that I, that I haven't more or less benefited from it because it's made me uh, healthier. It's made me think clearer. Uh, so, I've definitely made my share of mistakes. I've definitely had some failures. You're going to be the Knicks savior, and years later, you're not. H how do you how do you look back in retrospect on your Knicks experience? You know, the the good thing is, uh, you know, they say time heals all wounds, and uh, history has a way of uh, shedding light on what um, you know some perceived as a negative, and. I look back on my Knicks experience and what history has proven. We came in with a, a, a high salary cap uh, where we were burdened with a lot of salary and we had to believe, you know, beat the bushes to find talent and we did. And we were able to put together a pretty solid basketball team uh, that history has proven that, you know, we, we had some nice pieces there. Coaching style, you change your coaching style when you were coaching for the Knicks versus with these kids now? Are you more of a teacher uh, now? I, I still coach uh, the same way. I'm a, I'm a, value, I'm a values-based coach. I think you, um, you know, I come from the line of, uh, you know, Gene Pingatore, my high school coach is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, coach Knight, my college coach is in the Hall of Fame. And Chuck Daly, my pro coach is in the Hall of Fame. And um, I made it to the Hall of Fame. So I, I pretty much follow the things that they've taught me uh, and the way that they coach me. And they, they coach the person. Uh, they believe that the better person that you are, the better player that you'll be. And the way I coached in the NBA and the way I coach our kids, I coach more of their, their personality. And if I, if I can get a good person and if I can develop a good man, then I'm going to get a good basketball player. What's the one thing you'd most like to change about how people perceive you? I'm good. I, I like, I like, I think the perception of me is uh, the winners affect emotion. And when you win, uh, right away you're going to split the audience. Uh, there's going to be a group that likes you and there's going to be a group that don't like you. And the group that don't like you is the group that you beat all the time and you've beaten them or you've affected their emotion in some way so therefore they don't like you but you know if if you want to be liked all the time then lose <laughs> no matter what thomas does he'll always be linked to his tumultuous tenure with the knicks as team president he made numerous personnel moves that were questioned by media fans and experts and as a coach he lost 108 games in two seasons 
off the course court tonic lost an 11 million dollar sexual harassment suit hey guys the nba labor deal expires next thursday what's worse for knicks fans next year the nba canceling games or isaiah being the coach and president of the knicks again i'm sure that's a tough one for knicks fans they probably still have nightmares of isaiah on the sideline but a year after signing Amari Stoudemire and trading for Carmelo Anthony, Knicks fans just want to see basketball regardless of, the who, of who the head coach is. Yeah, I actually have to laugh at this question. I mean, the worst thing for any NBA fan is to have games canceled. But that said, Knicks fans remember that 34% winning percentage for Isaiah. So they don't want to see him on the sidelines, most of them at least. You listen to Isaiah, Isaiah and he sounds so convincing. In a recent interview, Thomas spoke about LeBron James and his flame out in the finals. He said LeBron's learning the hard lessons about what it takes to win. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I, I hope so. Just, just for LeBron as a person, because I'm not sure how much more criticism he can take before he just finally breaks down. I do, too. LeBron's had an easy, higher career. Remember, he came to Miami thinking he would win not one, not two, not three, but six NBA championships after year one. He has zero. Maybe this is a good lesson for him to come back with. It's I, one year. I, I guess at the end of the day, that is one thing that LeBron can get from Isaiah Thomas, which is how to take criticism. That's true. We have a lockout, guys, quickly, yes or no? Ten seconds. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, good. Well, that counts it. That, well, I guess we'll have to see. I, I weigh in. I agree. Next Thursday, we'll be talking about a lockout. Next Saturday, you'll hear about two. Pulse of the Fan, next. How peace and love is coming to the NBA. You're watching Toyota's Beyond the Game. We're back in two minutes. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry at $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Will you marry me? That's so cheesy. The new breakfast-inspired double cheese tortilla scramble. A perfect marriage of fluffy eggs, warm tortilla chips, and lots of gooey melted cheese. With all your favorites only at IHOP. Don't you just love it? I do. Mm. And you'll love our new Parmesan and Swiss scramble from our under 600 calorie simple and fit menu. Watch and you'll see. How CBS 12 News is working for you. In my exclusive report. Stories on protecting your family. Baby monitors can be used outside your home to spy. Coverage of the day's big stories. We've been following this story all day long today. Uncovering. You help people that need help. Informing. I just appreciate seeing it on Channel 12. Total news coverage. You got right back to us within two minutes. On the air, online, or on the go. CBS 12 News working for you. We want the pulse of the fan, and we'd like to welcome in 15-year-old Joey Brander, the youngest member of the United States Basketball Writers Association. Hey, Lakers, Ron, our test news. Joey, what is going on? Well, that's right, Rick. Ron, our test is once again in the news for his peculiar off-the-court antics. The former Ron William Artest Jr. and his attorney filed a petition to change his name to Meta World Peace with Meta coming from the Buddhist religion meaning friendliness. Now, the league isn't sure whether world peace or peace will be on the back of his jersey next year. Now, this isn't the first time a major sports star has changed his name. We all remember Chad Johnson from the Cincinnati Bengals changing his name to Ocho Cinco last year. Yeah, okay. What is the strangest name, maybe the hardest to pronounce, from this last week's NBA draft. My oh, wow. Um, well, with all the international players <coughs> taken, there's certainly a handful of them. Uh, Donatus Moti Hunis, Kenge Nagambo. My favorite is Jonas Valency Unis. And you know what, Rick? Give you a bonus. I'll even spell it V A L A N C I U N A S. Valency Unis. 
Get a life, my man. Uh, we're going to change your name from World Peace to World Mayhem, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Up next, thanks a lot. Get out of here. Up next, this day in sports history, you're watching Toyota's Beyond the Game. We're back in two minutes. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the fuel-efficient 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Why is Toyota the most fuel-efficient full-line automaker? Maybe it's because Toyota offers 25 vehicle choices highway rated 30 MPG or better. With so many gas-saving options, it's no surprise we're the number one choice among consumers. Now lease the Fuel 2011 Toyota Camry LE for $189 a month. That's $189 a month. Plus, get Toyota Care with complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance. We have lots to choose from, so hurry in today. Every morning, the CBS 12 Good Morning South Florida team is getting you ready for your day. Morning news that's new. We're live in Port St. Lucie, and this morning... What's happening now? We just arrived here on the scene. These are the latest... And what's going to happen next? Focused on weather. We have an increasing chance of strong thunderstorms moving in tomorrow. Traffic. These sound lanes have been shut down. And what's happening in your community right now? CBS 12's Good Morning South Florida. Something good to wake up to. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour there, there. to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Find out how you can live United for Education. Give, advocate, volunteer. Go to liveunited.org. Do you wear this? This day in sports history, June 25, 1926, Bobby Jones wins the first of three British Open titles. 1948, Joe Lewis knocks out Jersey Joe Walcott to retain the world heavyweight title. 1976, Muhammad Ali fights professional wrestler Antonio Inoki in a boxer versus wrestler match, a 15-round draw. And in 1997, the NHL approves new franchises in Nashville, Columbus, Minneapolis, and Atlanta. The Thrashers did not work out, by the way, and moved to Winnipeg last month. And beyond the game every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. following CBS 12 News at 7. That's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us, and see you next time when once again we go Beyond the Game. Why do the 